morning. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, welcome to our uh, youth service today. Um, we haven't had rain for, for a long time, so I'm glad it's raining. I know some of you guys don't like rain, but I, I enjoy the rain quite a bit, uh, but I'm glad it's raining. Uh, uh, just a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, as I told you guys last week, I'll be getting married uh, next week. So discipleship um, will resume again on the 30th of July. Uh, I let the, the guys already know. So if you um, are curious, um, just letting you know that the, the discipleship is going to uh, pick back up on the 30th of July. And then next week, the, ninth, the 19th, uh, next, not this coming Sunday, or next Sunday, uh, but the 19th of July, Pastor Josh will be filling in for me. Uh, so make sure you come out um, and learn uh, what God has to say uh, through Pastor Josh. Uh, last but not least, we are continuing our current Olympics. Um, um, teacher Sue, uh, she is uh, taking attendance and making sure that people that um, are coming in five minutes prior to uh, our worship time and just getting uh, their hearts ready. So make sure you continue uh, to come out um, at 10.55. That's when we start. Um, and whenever we <laughs> uh, get together, uh, I don't know when that's going to be, uh, hopefully soon, uh, but just... Based on what we're seeing right now, it doesn't seem like we, um, it's going to calm down anytime soon. But um, yeah, when uh, we get back together and worship, um, we'll make sure to give you guys a nice gift uh, for attending service sometime. Um, so today, um, if you have your Bibles, please turn to the 8th chapter of the Gospel of John. We'll be looking at verses 1 to 11. looking at the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John uh, verses 1 to 11 I'm sure it's a, a story that many of you guys um, already know it's the uh, the woman who is caught in adultery um, but if you're there uh, please feed along with me Says they went each to his own house. Um, this is from the previous verse, starting verse one. Says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came to the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law of Moses. Now, in the, law of Mo in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And, at one, um, and once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, uh, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Uh, join me in a quick word of prayer. Father, um, I thank you for your words. Um, I thank you for this church. I thank you for... Jesus Christ, who has shown so much mercy uh, and compassion to us. And I pray that you would um, just teach us from your words um, and just be able to learn a little bit more about who Jesus is. Uh, and as a result, that we may put into action um, what you teach us today. We thank you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so just to... Um, explain what's going on here um, so Jesus goes uh, so 
he goes to the mountain in the morning what happens is he's going to the temple and he's beginning to teach um, these people about the gospel about uh, the different teachings that you know instructions that he has and in the midst of the instruction there is an interruption uh, what happens is the scribes and the Pharisees um, if you guys remember scribes were people who copied down the laws of Moses and they also taught um, the scriptures um, and also the Pharisees were also people who taught uh, teachers of the law and so in the middle of Jesus teaching these people in the temple they interrupt his teaching and they bring this woman who committed adultery in order to test him um, the thing is rather than being concerned about the law that this woman broke uh, these religious leaders, they came to Jesus because they wanted to trap him. They wanted to trick him into saying something wrong so that they could put a charge against Jesus. Now, why would the Pharisees and the scribes try to put a charge on Jesus? Because when Jesus spoke to the people, he spoke with power and authority, and he treated them with mercy. He had compassion on the people who were sick, and he loved them. He cared for the condition of their souls but on the other side the Pharisees they 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 taught the people with a legalistic mindset so if you see this contrast the people when they're looking at Jesus they prefer to, they prefer to go to Jesus so they the the Pharisees the scribes they were losing popularity so they were trying to find ways to persecute him so you, if you see throughout the Gospels uh, you'll see many places that the Jews were, were plotting to kill him, trying to persecute him, trying to uh, uh, put something against Jesus so that they have a good reason to persecute him. So that's what they're trying to do. So they bring this woman who is, without a doubt, had been caught in the act of sleeping with a man she wasn't supposed to. And they place her in the midst of this crowd and in front of Jesus. And they, and they ask him this question, right? Um, by the way, these scribes and the Pharisees, they know, they knew the laws of Moses very well. They were, they were rabbis, they were teachers of the law. So they memorized lots and lots of the laws. So they know what the Old Testament says about uh, adultery. What are the laws about adultery? Like if you look at Leviticus uh, chapter 20, verse 20, it says that if a man commits adultery... With the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. So more precisely, those who commit adultery, they were to be stoned to death. So they know this law. But there's a problem. They, they bring only the woman to the scene. They only bring the woman and not the men. Where is the man? Because... The law clearly states that both the adulterer and the adulteress are su supposed to be stoned to death, but they only bring the woman, um, which tells us that they're, they're already not being honest with the law. And their intention is, is to really trick Jesus and see how he responds. Now, these are some of the possible outcomes that these religious leaders are thinking. So if... Jesus, being the merciful and the compassionate um, God that he is, he lets this woman go, let's say. This will be violating the laws of Moses because adulterers are supposed to be stoned to death. So if Jesus lets her go, they're going to say, well, you're contradicting the laws of Moses. You're sinning. And they could have a charge against him that way. On the other hand, if Jesus condemns this woman uh, to death, um, it will be reported to the Roman authorities because Israel at this time was under Roman law. And the Jews, they were not allowed to execute their own criminals. So condemning this woman would make Jesus an enemy of Roman government. That is why the Jews were not allowed to crucify Jesus. Right? And so the Pharisees can also use this to say that this Jesus, who has so much power and authority and mercy... He is not a very merciful God. And, you know, this also makes him an enemy of Rome and turn the entire crowd against him. 
So these, this is what the, the Pharisees are thinking when they are, are bringing this woman in front of Jesus. Now, this, as I was looking into um, just what, how the Pharisees were and how they were so ready to just throw a stone at this woman um, and also just trick Jesus, um, it, it reminded me of who we are sometimes. Because we, we like to throw stones. Um, well, not so much like literally throw stones. Of course, it's not um, what's allowed right now. But we throw words that sometimes are, I think, more hurtful. Um, James 3 says that the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Um, I make mistakes with my tongue, with my words more often than I should, but what you say and how you say it and, and when you say it matters a great deal. And we have to be very careful of our words because internal wounds take a lot longer to heal than external wounds. Um, I remember back when I was in second grade, I still remember and. and what my second grade teacher told me and left a big scar uh, because um, she said in the, in the, in the, literally in the middle of the classroom, I was the only Asian kid. Um, she told me, um, we don't need your kind here. Go back to where you came from. And that very phrase is it, it's a couple of sentences. Um, still, it left such a big scar in me that I still remember exactly how she said it and what she said, just, you know, her attitude and the hatred that she expressed toward me. And these scars, I mean, the, you know, when you throw a stone at somebody, you're going to have an external wound or something. I mean, that's going to heal very quickly. But when you throw the wrong words at people, these scars, these wounds, internal wounds can last a very long time. So we have to be very careful about the things that we say. But then Jesus, when he is brought, um, uh, when the Jews, when the Pharisees um, and the scribes bring this woman and they ask him this question, he doesn't respond um, with words, but rather he responds by writing something on the ground. He gets down and he starts writing something on the ground. Now the text doesn't tell us what he wrote, so we simply don't know. Uh, but seeing this, they, they're, they're kind of confused, like, what's going on? So they keep on asking him, what should we do with this woman? This woman who just committed, we, we just caught in the act of adultery. What should we do with this woman? And verse 7, if you look at verse 7, um, this is how Jesus responds. He says, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. In other words, um, the penalty of the law should be carried out by someone who has never committed a sin. Um, everyone is a sinner and everyone has sinned once or at least once, <laughs> probably more than once. Everyone is a sinner. And the Bible tells us over and over that all of us are sinners. It says in Romans 3.23, uh, 3, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 3.10, No one is righteous. No, not one. In Ecclesiastes 7.20, Indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who continuously does good and never sins. Psalms 14.3, They have all turned aside together. They have become corrupted. There is no one who does good, not even one. So the Bible tells us repeatedly that everyone is a sinner, which means no one except Jesus had the right to stone this woman. Right? By this statement, by what Jesus says in verse 7, um, everyone gets quiet and they begin to leave one by one. Because Jesus, what he had done with this statement is he had revealed their own hearts, their own sins, especially the religious leaders. Because they knew that they were supposed to also bring the man. And, and this is more of a supplementary information, but they're also supposed to bring two witnesses of, 
um, that also saw this this adultery that was happening, they were also supposed to come in and testify that the two adulterers were committing adultery, but they were not even present. So the the religious leaders, especially, they knew that they were wrong, that they weren't being honest to the law, and they were convicted by their conscience because they just knew that you know whatever they're trying to do was sinful. So they started to leave one by one, oldest to the youngest. Uh, a small caveat in understanding verse seven, which is the key text for, for our um, for our text um, key verse for our text today, is that uh, this verse can be used um, to excuse sin. Uh, it's the attitude that uh, that we are free from blame because. Everybody is a sinner, and everybody has done something wrong. Um, but verse 7 doesn't excuse sin, but rather condemns those who are guilty, even though they have never been caught. Do you think that the Pharisees have done something wrong and never been caught? Absolutely. Have we all done something that we're not very proud of and not been caught? I'm sure all of us have. But by condemning the adulterous woman, the religious leaders were hiding behind this mask of righteousness, when on the inside, they were all just as broken as any other man. As I was thinking about this, uh, it reminded me of, um, of my car a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I, I drive a, a 2009 uh, Toyota Camry. Um, a few months ago, I took my car um, to the body shop right next to our church. Um, and I asked the owner if he, after I, I did an oil change, and, and I asked the owner if he could um, check if anything else in the engine needed to be fixed. And so I, I left the car and I came back a few hours later uh, and the owner gave me a sheet of paper with a list of things that needed to be fixed. It was like five or six different things. I can't remember what they were. But on the outside, my car looks fine. Um, it's a little bit beat up. I mean, it's got a dent on the side and like the, the back light is, is cracked. But I mean, overall, it looks just fine. But... There were lots of things on the inside of the engine that were damaged and needed repair. Not getting caught in the act of sinning does not make you a righteous person. Because whether you get caught or not, we're all sinners who deserve to suffer in the eternal lake of fire. All of us. Every single one of us. But the good news is that Jesus Christ, he showed us compassion and mercy, just like he did with the adulterous woman. When everybody left and Jesus and the woman uh, were left, uh, he asked the woman, where, woman, where are they? He's talking about the, the religious leaders and everybody else. Um, where are the women? Uh, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And the woman responds, no one, Lord. And Jesus, his response to that, he says, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Um, Jesus not only has the right to condemn this woman, because he is perfect, he has never sinned, right? But he didn't condemn this woman, and instead he showed grace to this woman, because he loved and cared for the woman's soul. But we also know that God is holy and he treats sin very seriously. So Jesus doesn't only just show grace to this woman. He doesn't just say, woman, um, neither do I condemn you. He doesn't just stop there. He says, go and from now on sin no more. He's challenging this woman to leave her adulterous life. And begin a new life. Um, I think that's where many of us could be today. Maybe you're still living this adulterous life. Maybe you're still living in sin. And um, 
you're still waiting for something and maybe maybe you have doubts about living a new life with Jesus Christ um, if that is you um, I hope that what Jesus says um, is a challenge to you because as we have learned today we're all sinners as we know and we all deserve to be in eternal damnation but Jesus he still shows mercy and compassion for all sinners whether you are caught in the act of sinning or adultery whatever that may be for you or whether you are sinning behind closed doors and the privacy of your own room whatever that may be all sins can be forgiven and Jesus he showed us he showed us his love and compassion through the cross and so that is my challenge to you. Are you willing to live a new life with Jesus Christ? Or are you just going to live your old life? Sinning and going against what the Lord has for you. So hopefully that will be a good challenge for you. And I encourage you guys to, um, as we face this really difficult time with the pandemic, uh, that you really take this opportunity to take your faith a little bit more seriously. I know it can be very uh, unmotivating to stay home and not being able to see your friends. And I get that too. I, I, I feel very unmotivated when I'm home. I can't go outside, meet anybody. Uh, it's really hard. It is. Um, but know that if you ask the Lord for strength in these times, I know that he will give you strength and guidance. He gives grace to the humble. He gives, those, he gives grace and wisdom to those who, who, who ask him. And he's going to give it plentifully all you gotta do is just you have to ask the lord you have to get down on your knees and pray ask the lord for these things so hopefully um you'll have learned a little bit more about who jesus is and hopefully uh what we have learned today will motivate you will encourage you and challenge you to move forward in your faith so let's pray uh, father we thank you for your words um we thank you for the story that we have learned um and how uh, whether or not uh, we get caught in the act of sin or we do it in the privacy of our homes or uh, Lord we know that all those things are sinful and and we know that everyone is a sinner but Lord the good news is that Jesus Christ showed compassion to this woman as he showed compassion to all of us um, so father I pray that we may be encouraged by the fact that we have a way out, that Jesus Christ is the Savior, that He is the bread of life, that is going to fulfill us of our every need. And I pray that we may be able to uh, be challenged by what He has said, what Jesus said, to sin no more. And Father, I pray that we may strive um, to live more faithfully in, in our walk. And Lord, I pray that You would just give us the strength uh, to do so. So Father, uh, we do thank You so much for this church, for this youth, and for everyone who has gathered here today, and I pray that you will just continue to guide us throughout the week uh, and just bless um, everything that we, that we do in order to uh, continue our faith in you. We thank you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, finish in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, have a blessed week, and enjoy your time at small groups.